Looking for a few mosaic gift ideas that are $10 and under? Well, in this video, I'm gonna share with you a few of those ideas, and I'm gonna show you that right now. I know there are a lot of people that have actually changed over from reading conventional books to eBooks. However, in saying that, there's still a lot of people out there that read and prefer to read conventional books over eBooks. Now that's where these bookmarks come into their own. They are very cost effective to produce. In fact, you can make them for around about the $5 mark and they are very easy to make. You can make them in around about 10 minutes and that's without drying time. So they're not difficult to make at all, nor are they very pricey to make as well. Now you can personalize them, perhaps you want to put uh, the person who you want to give it to, perhaps you want to put their favorite flower on the top, or perhaps you're going to put their initial on it, or a family pet, or maybe a personal photo of someone close to them. Whatever the case may be, they make a really good gift. Now I'll put a link up the top of the screen here in case you want to go to because I've created a video showing you how to actually create and make these uh, bookmarks. Now they look really, really great when you're giving them as a gift if you put them in a gift box because that will really set them aside and also it'll make it a lot easier to actually gift wrap as well. But putting them in a gift box will just make them look totally fabulous. Now, when I'm out and about, sometimes if I see an op shop or a thrift store, I like to walk inside and see what they actually have. Now, I try and go to the school ones and also the church ones rather than the big chain store type ones because I find that the church and school ones have a pretty good variety, but they are a lot more cost effective to buy from than those very large uh, chain store type op shops. Now when it comes to choosing a frame, uh, I generally go for ones that are actually flat edged here. Now this one here, the actual frame slants down on an angle on each side, which does make it a little bit more difficult if you don't take that into consideration. Whether you're creating a mixed media piece and you're using beads and you're using mosaics or whether you're just doing a jewelry frame, you need to take that into consideration if the frame has anything other than a flat edge all the way around. Now this was quite easy to do. I used some broken jewelry and I used some bead chain, uh, some seed beads on the inside here and then I used some rhinestone chain on the inner area here. Now I also used some broken jewelry here and I also used some of these embellishments as well which actually came from the US I bought a, a few years ago. But what you put into it is up to you. For instance, you can make it as expensive as you would like, or you can just do something that's really nice and not adding all these focal points into it, and that will also reduce your cost down. So it's up to you. You're in control as to how much you want to spend. Now, here's another frame here. And this one here is actually really good to use because it's actually got a raised edge here. And that means that you could put stained glass into that edge there or jewelry or whatever you want. But this would be a fairly good frame to use because of these areas that you could mosaic into. All it needs is a piece of clear glass, which is very easy and very cheap. So that's not an issue to replace. And then you can actually uh, re-sand some of this back or paint it or patina it, however you want to. But I think this was all of $3. And now, uh, if I mosaic it, it would, uh, you know, it would really make a very good present uh, for someone, whether it's a mixed media or a mosaic or whatever the case may be, uh, it would make a really nice present. So that's a couple of ideas for you if you're interested in using a photo frame as a gift. Necklaces can make a really good gift, but you just need to know what the person likes that you're giving it to because jewelry can be quite personal. Now, in the case of these two here, these are a Chinese bezel. They are reasonably deep, but I have seen a lot out there that are not as deep as these, and you can't really do a lot with those. So when you're looking at buying bezels, go for the deeper ones because you'll be able to do more with them. Now, this is just a couple of cheap Chinese bezels and all I did was I got some glass beads. This one's iridized. I put some E6000 into the bottom of the bezel and then push the glass beads into it. So that, that's almost done. Then I just bought some cord and added to this one here 
and I bought some chain which came from a thrift store or op shop and just added that to that bezel. That was like 50 cents that chain. So all up you have a couple of lovely gifts and they're quite inexpensive. Now going over to these bezels, these are going to cost you more but these are a superior quality and you can just look at them and feel them and tell that they are a much better bezel to buy. Now these ones are a deeper bezel so you can do more with them. You can add crockery like I've got in these ones here or you can use it for mixed media depending on what you would like to do. Now I'll put a link up the top of the screen here that will show you how I created this mosaic bezel. Now I'd also bought some chain which was also repurposed and uh, I bought that from a thrift store or op shop. So you can create some really wonderful jewellery pieces. You just need to know that what the person likes that you're giving it to and uh, I'm sure they'll appreciate it. A mosaic pot can make a really good present and this one's outside for the garden but you can also make an indoor mosaic pot or perhaps it doesn't have to be for a plant. You can make one a quarter of this size or half this size and that could be for their work desk where they can put pens and pencils and you know other office bits and pieces in there perhaps for the remote controls or anything like that. So it doesn't have to be just for the garden. Now this particular one I used some glass tiles around the top just what I had laying around. I had some glass beads that I had bought some years back so I put those in there as well and I had some focal pieces too and I just put those on with an SMX polymer because I don't like using silicon because it contains solvents and those solvents uh, it gives off solvents while it's curing where the SMX polymers which is like a silicon doesn't contain uh, solvents. So it makes it a lot better to use than using silicon in my opinion. Now yes the pot is a bit marked from the grout but because this is for me I wasn't that bothered too bothered by it because when I put this outside it is going to patina anyway and probably it'll get a bit of uh, green algae over it and stuff like that because I like things to uh, to certainly age rather than having them look always brand new. But if you were going to grout and you didn't want that to happen then you could certainly mask all that pot off which is not difficult to do and uh, that would stop the grout from actually getting onto the pot and then when you finish grouting you can just pull the masking off and your pot will look brand new. I did actually mask, funny enough I did actually mask around the top here and around this rim and that is very very clean. So the masking does work and I do tend to mask pretty well everything even photo frames wherever I don't want the grout to go I will mask it. So anyway this is another alternative for you if you're looking at creating uh, a mosaic for someone to give to them you might want to use some crockery. Anything you have lying around that's going to be suitable for the environment that it's going into uh, always keep that in mind and like I said crockery uh, could be lots of different things that, that uh, you have laying around that's not going to create you know that's not going to cost you a lot of money. These trinket boxes can be quite fun to create with and you can make them as personal as you want them to. I mean it might be for someone uh, personal to you, it might be to someone special to say thank you, whatever the case may be you can put whatever design you want into them. Now this one came with a sign underneath the clear glass here. Mum, the memories of our times together have become priceless treasures. Now that's fine if you wanted to use that, however I'm wanting to actually just take that out and I'm going to dress this top up here a little bit. So what I'm looking at doing is putting some stained glass in the centre with some rhinestone chain on the outside and then a focal piece inside. There's absolutely no grouting to this. So you don't have to grout. Now if you were producing a piece and uh, you wanted to grout then you just make sure you cover all the exposed area where you don't want the grout to go. So you'd protect all this area here. However in this particular case I'm going to show you what I'm going to do which is quite simple, very inexpensive and it's just bits and pieces that I've uh, had laying around the studio. Now first up I'm going to put some rhinestone chain around the outside. I'm going to be using MAC glue for that. Uh, but you can use other adhesives as well, whatever you decide, but I just happen to have this here. And I'm just going to put just a very thin bead around the outside like that. And then I'm going to get a piece of the rhinestone chain, which I just have here automatically cut. Just pop that in like that. 
and we're going to push it towards the edge because the stained glass will butt right up to that chain. Then we'll do along here as well. And I'm really not too worried about, you know, if the glue goes further in here because I'm going to be sticking the stained glass down with it straight away anyway, so that, that will work in quite okay. And this MAC glue will dry clear. So we'll put that in there. And then we'll put some down on this edge here. And we're only looking for a small bead. We're not looking for a large amount. There we go. And this really doesn't take any time at all. And you can pick up these trinket boxes for around about $5. Uh, cheaper if you go to a op shop or a thrift store, a $2 shop will have them. Well, sometimes they have them. Uh, and uh, you know, a $2 shop doesn't mean you're gonna pay $2 for it. It's probably around the $5 mark. Sometimes a bit more, sometimes a bit less, just depending on where you shop. There you go, that looks pretty good. Now I'm now going to And we don't want the mat to ooze out everywhere, so we're just putting a little coating in there. There we go. Now I'll just open that up just to push that firmly. So some of the mac is actually going to the edge and it's actually just squeezing into some of those rhinestone chains there, but that doesn't matter. What we don't want to do is have the actual adhesive come up uh, onto the surface of the rhinestones or anywhere else for that matter. So having it go to the edge is not an issue. So now that we've done that, I'm thinking about this focal piece. Now this is just a piece of broken jewelry. I don't even know where it came from. So I'm going to just sit that in there like that and I think that will look quite good. So I'm going to use E6000. Now I know a lot of people don't like E6000, including myself, I'm not keen on it. However, if you're not using it all the time and you're in a very well ventilated area and you're very careful, then it will be fine. And we're only going to be using a little piece in the center here. There you go, it's about all it needs. Put the cap straight on. Make sure that's going to be up the right way, which it is, or it will be, which is that way. And we're going to now just swish that round a little bit. There you go. And that's really quite an easy project, very simple, very quick. And I think that would make a lovely present to someone special or just as a thank you to someone. One of the things I do like to create is a mosaic rock and I find that these really do work well outside in the garden or as a gift to someone. Now they, this particular rock came from a garden supply centre who actually sells rocks and I was actually given this rock because I only wanted the one and he was very kind enough to give me the rock and it's a nice flat one. I went and chose the rock and I said, how much will this be? And he says, look, you can have it. So that was very, very kind of them to do that. But it is a good way to get them because sometimes if you're going along a creek looking for rocks, you, can, uh, you may not be able to take them because of local laws. So just keep that in mind. And this is very easy to do. This is a bit of bead ch uh, ball chain, uh, which is a beautiful quality ball chain. Uh, this is a glass tile, which I find is really quite stunning. This is iridized and it just looks such an amazing piece in here. And I don't know whether you can see that. I think you might be able to. You know, it's got blues and purples in it. And then I've used this glass here, which is iridized glass as well. And that, of course, has blues and purples in it as well. And then I use some uh, millefiori, which I don't know where I got the millefiori from, but it works quite well for this piece anyway. It's certainly not Italian millefiori, which is what I really like to use. But I just thought for this purpose of this, I will use this millefiori. So you can create some really, really wonderful uh, mosaic rocks. You can use, uh, you know, hearts. You can create initials, people's initials. If you wanted to really personalize it for someone as a gift, you can put their initial on it. 
People use them for many, many different things and I just think it makes a wonderful gift. This is a really easy, simple project to do and I made this for a video some time ago and once I finished it, I thought this is really too good to throw out. What am I going to do with it? So I decided I'd, uh, I'd take it inside, put it on the windowsill and lean it up against the kitchen window. And as soon as I did that, the light shining through, the sun shining through just brought all these colours to life. So it's very, very easy. It's just a piece of three mil clear glass and then you're adhering all this beautiful transparent cathedral glass on top of that three mil glass. The most difficult part is to make sure that you squeeze out any excess uh, air and also excess glue that's going to be in between the glass piece and also the substrate because you want that excess adhesive to go right out to the edge of the glass piece so as you don't get any grout bleed when it comes to grouting. But other than that, a very simple project. You just empty your mind from any thoughts and you then start adhering down your glass pieces. And you can make the design as complex as you want, but I wanted something very easy and the effect is still very beautiful. Now another simple project that you can do uh, and give as a gift is a paver. And up on screen you'll see uh, a couple of pavers that I created and these are really quite easy to do and quite inexpensive because these are only small ones. They're only about 200 mil by about 200 mil. Now I've used glazed tiles so these are not really suitable for where they're going to get quite a bit of traffic but as an ornamental paver you know maybe on the edge of the garden or on the edge of a pathway somewhere where people are not going to walk along then these will be fine because with anything like glazed uh, glazed tiles or stained glass or anything shiny even crockery can be an issue for walking on because uh, it has a slippage factor and of course that can create problems if someone's going to be walking along there and they slip or even if they're going to be in an environment where they're going to be a bit uh, shadowed you might find that they might get a bit of uh, moss growing on them as well which will also enhance that ha hazard of uh, slippage. So it's always wise if you're going to create any of these type of pavers to always use materials that are non-slip or at least have them as an ornamental paver where no one is going to be walking on them uh, because they could get injured if they do fall. But certainly creating the pavers is really quite easy and quite a lot of fun. And if you're going to be giving a paver to someone and it's going to be an ornamental paver so they can put in their garden bed, you can create flowers on it, you can use a mixture of broken crockery, there's also glazed tiles, stained glass, lots of different things, but you've just got to make sure that whatever you use it's going to be suitable for the environment it's going to go into. Now this box frame also makes a really good present to give to someone. They're quite inexpensive. I picked, uh, I bought a few of these and I picked it up from Lincraft or Spotlight here in Australia and they cost me about $5 each. Now all I did was I created a heart and I put rhinestone chain around the outside, I filled it with millefiori and then I just got the whole thing and stuck it in the centre of the actual box frame and I think it looks really really good. Now I'll put a link up the top here of the uh, screen in case you want to go to the video uh, that will show you how I actually created that heart. Now you could also use some other focal piece as well I mean if you've got broken jewellery and you're going to be giving a Christmas present you could actually put a Christmas tree in the centre made of broken jewellery or perhaps just a heart made of broken jewellery just depending on who you're giving it to and when you're going to be giving it at that time of the year. You can also create a mixed media mosaic in there as well. So you can do lots of things with a box frame. It's just going to be dependent on how much effort you want to put into it and also how much in the cost of materials that you want to put into it as well. But they do make a really good present to give. Now another really good present to give is a tea light container. Now one of the advantages of this is if you're into stained glass you're bound to have lots of little pieces and off cuts of your cathedral type glass. So adding those to the outside will help use that up and in the process you'll be creating a really good uh, beautiful present to give. Now I know you can't really see those colours on there. I should have actually have uh, put a light in there so that you could actually see those colours illuminate. Now this has uh, been made with a clear uh, glass container 
And what happens is you put a tea light candle in there or you can even use some of those LED battery operated white bud lights which are quite inexpensive and they last for quite a few days. Now because you have light in there it's going to shine through and illuminate these colours and it's going to look totally amazing. Now on the top here I have used opaque stained glass which means that the light will not shine through that stained glass. So when you're making one of these don't use opaque stained glass on the surface on the outside because when you put the lights in there you won't be able to see through it. So always use cathedral stained glass. Now on this particular piece I've also used some mirror strips as well down the sides and I've also used a focal piece. Now you don't have to put a focal piece on there, that's just what I've done. Now this container is slightly out of square so I did have to uh, make up in some areas a bit of extra stained glass but because this piece is quite eclectic I don't really see that as an issue. I think it kind of adds to the piece as well. Now I've also used some iridized uh, glass beads and I've also used some uh, pearls as well around the top there just to add a bit of interest. Now the piece came from a one of those two dollar type stores and just a question when you go into one of those two dollar type stores why is it if you've gone into one and it's two dollars why is it that you usually come out paying more for a piece rather than two dollars? I often wonder that but it's not a major problem I just wondered why we usually spend more for a piece even though it's classed as a two dollar store. Now this piece did come with a lid which you can use uh, but I decided I'm not going to use the lid, you can mosaic that if you choose to. This piece was around about the $3, $3.50 which is quite inexpensive and it wasn't difficult to do. The only thing is that there is a bit of a learning curve because when you're sticking down the, the glass to the substrate, your, your cathedral glass to the substrate, you just need to be able to press firmly without over pushing down on it to squeeze out the air bubbles and of course the excess glue. Now if you leave a few air bubbles I don't consider that a major problem but what you do need to do is squeeze out that excess adhesive to the sides because when you grout, when the uh, glue has dried, when you grout you don't want to get grout bleed underneath the cathedral glass. So by squeezing out all that excess glue to the sides of the pieces then that will stop you from getting grout bleed underneath the cathedral glass because if you do get grout bleed and you have your light in there and when it illuminates and brings those colours to life you're going to have underneath a few of these pieces uh, you're going to have a black area because that's where the grout has gone. So that's one of the most important things to do. Make sure you push out the excess adhesive so as you don't get grout bleed. Now the other thing you need to take into consideration, this particular piece uh, was not totally flat, it concaves in on the sides which is not an issue but you just need to take that in consideration and if your piece is not going to be square, the substrate or the container is not going to be square, you need to also take that into consideration. And, uh, but overall I think this piece has turned out really, really well. So I think this makes a really great gift. Now if you have any other ideas on uh, creating a mosaic piece that could be quite inexpensive and would make a really great gift, put it down in the bottom of the comments section. I'll be interested in uh, reading your idea and I'm sure others will too. So anyway, I hope you've taken something away from the video. I'll see you in the next video and have a great day. Enjoy.